Hello friends, welcome to Insights Icon Initiative. Our today topic is going to be on human rights. You all know that in this interconnected world, human rights plays a very important role. And the human rights evolution we have seen from the days of Magna Carta till the UN Declaration on Human Rights. And these human rights are not abstract anymore. They form the bedrock of the society and they provide dignity and liberty and freedom to the individuals. They protect us from the expression, I mean oppression, exploitation and other various forms of discrimination. So we all know the importance of the human rights in this context. In our India, these human rights are protected and should be enforced by an organization known as NHRC. But NHRC work will also be evaluated periodically and that evaluative work we are going to discuss. In this video, we will check about who will evaluate the National Human Rights Commissions of various countries and what are the issues they found with our Indian NHRC. Apart from that, we will also discuss about NHRC composition, who will select the NHRC members. Those technical details we will check. Okay. Without any delay, let's see the video. First, the topic is about the NHRC accreditation status. We will discuss the context, obviously, then National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, its composition. Here, the organization known as Global Alliance for National Human Rights Institution. This organization is the one which is responsible to give accreditation to international human rights level. Okay. If any National Human Rights Commission is able to get the accreditation, that means that National Human Rights Commission is successfully protecting the human rights, including the minorities and women as well. Reasons for deferment, that means Indian National Human Rights Commission did not get the accreditation, A accreditation. Accreditation will be given based on the performance. We did not get. They are postponed in giving this accreditation. What are the reasons? And regarding this accreditation, we are following now Paris principles and A status. On what basis this A status will be given? India's accreditation status under review, why they are reviewing it? What are the challenges related to NHRC? And finally, we draw the conclusion. These are the learning outcomes of this particular video. Regarding the syllabus mapping, here it is related to gender studies paper 2 that is statutory body. We all discussed that statutory body is an organization which is created through parliament law or state law that is known as statutory body. If you remember, give any example where statutory body converted into constitutional body. Okay, Give any one example where statutory body converted into constitutional body. Now let us see the context. India's the apex human rights body that is NHRC they are preparing to defend their human rights process and their track record in human rights protection in a meeting to be held in Geneva. In this meeting decision will be taken on whether India's human rights commission they will receive the A status or not. Okay, So this is going to be the context. Now let us see we will try to discuss some of the key aspect in this video. In this video, we are going to mainly discuss about this human rights body that is NHRC. Okay, NHRC, NHRC and global ratings, global, okay, global rating and what are the issues related to NHRC in getting global rating. Apart from that, we have to know some technical details regarding the NHRC as well. In India, NHRC mainly deals with the protection of human rights, human rights. But unfortunately, one of the main drawback of the NHRC is still it is remain in a statutory body. It did not got the it did not get the constitutional status. That is one of the drawback. It remain statutory body. And one more limitation related to this is it did not have any specialized investigating agency. They are depending on the police. In most of the situation where the human rights violations are happening by the police and they are investigating those cases, okay, the same department, obviously that will result into conflict of interest. That is one of the major issue facing with the NHRC. Okay. Let's see some of the technicalities regarding the NHRC. It is a statutory body and established under the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993. The commission, it is a watchdog of the human rights in India. And any human rights violations or the enforcement of the human rights laws or all the grievances related to human rights, they will be dealt by NHRC. 
Of course, NHRC will be supported at state levels by SHRC, State Human Rights Commissions. Composition. Generally, it is a multi-member body consisting of 1 plus 5 members, chairman plus 5 members. Chairmen generally, there will be the retired CJI or the retired Supreme Court judge. Previously, the chairman of NHRC must be retired CJI only. But after the amendments in the recent times, even the retired Supreme Court judge is also eligible to become NHRC chairman. Next, members. Generally, these members will be the retired or serving judges of high court that is one, one member and one more member is retired or serving chief justice of high court and rest of the three persons out of these three members one member must be women and the these three members generally they will have knowledge on human rights and they have practical experience with the with respect to human rights so this is the composition of the nhrc so total one plus five members okay so it is a multi-member body one plus five members out of this five two are coming from the judicial background and three are coming from the human rights background out of those three one must be women next appointment and tenure let's see they are appointed by the president but of course they will be appointed by president on the recommendation of the selection committee the selection committee consists of these are the six, six members okay of course here only five numbers are there but this one here two members will be there one is a prime minister the second is speaker of Lok Sabha, deputy chairman of Rajya Sabha, leader of opposition in both houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, and central home minister. Here, if you look at, prime minister generally belong to the government ruling party, home minister also generally belong to the ruling party, and speaker of the Lok Sabha is generally belong to ruling party. In India, most of the times, speaker don't need to resign to their political party. It is compulsory in UK, but not in India. So, more or less, half of the members are from virtually they belong to the ruling party next term members of nhrc they will enjoy three years or the age of 70 years whichever earlier and they are eligible for the reappointment both members as well as the chairman here we have to understand that one of the major drawback with indian nhrc is there is a limitation period called one year that means after an incident happened related to human rights violation that incident has to be reported before nhrc only within one year within one year of the incident okay after one year even though you report about that incident nhrc cannot take up those cases so this one year limitation period is is you know like uh, been uh, attracting lot of criticism related to nhrc removal members and chairman they will be removed by the president only on the recommendation of the Supreme Court. Supreme Court does inquiry and based on that inquiry, members will be removed. Next, now we will see the international level. In the international level, there is an institution called Global Alliance for National Human Rights Institution. This international body, it is responsible for giving accreditation to the human rights bodies at the national level. And this was, this is, this was established in 1993. And it is a recognized and a trusted partner of the United Nations. First, initially, it, 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 it was formed as International Coordinating Committee of National Institutions, the name for the promotion protection of the human rights. Later, its name changed in 2016 as GANHRI, Global Alliance of National Human Rights Institution. It is a member-based network organization and that gathers the national human rights institutions from all around the world. Okay. And its main responsibility is it will check the performance of national human rights institutions at various countries and give accreditation according to their work. At the moment, member countries in these organizations are 120 and India is also a member and secretariat of this organization located in Geneva, Switzerland. So here, what are the reasons this uh, organization is showing with respect to India's NHRI? Okay. So, why they are not giving a status immediately? They are differing their decision because lack of diversity in staff. They are saying that in NHRC, no member is from minority. And the women representation is also very less in NHRC. And the inefficient action of the NHRC. And there is no progress in cases dealing by NHRC. Police involving in human rights violations, which are caused by the police, that is obviously a big conflict of interest. Poor cooperation with civil society. These are some of the issues flagged by this international organization. Next, 
this organization is saying that nhrc is repetitively failing to deliver its mandate with respect to protection of human rights regarding the religious minority and regarding the persecution of human rights defenders and protecting people from marginalized communities and in india nhrc is lacking the independency and pluralism and diversity which are the core principles highlighted in the paris principles now let's see what are these paris principles paris principles they are identified by united nations in 1993 this united nations general assembly they adopted these six principles as paris principles and these are the core principles related to human rights these are let's see number 1 so the mandate and competence of the human rights bodies i mean on what mandate they established and how competently they are performing autonomy from government how independently these bodies are independence guaranteed by statute that means if they are established by a statute or if they are established by constitution whether those constitution or statute is giving independency to this organization or not if you look at most of the constitutional bodies they are guaranteed independence either in the form of the security of salary or in the form of the security of tenure okay so they'll check whether that guarantees are in place or not next pluralism that is diversity in members adequate resources especially with respect to funding and staff support infra and all adequate powers of investigation so based on these criteria a particular human rights body they will be given this accreditation this a rating in india's nhrc a rating india's nhrc got a rating in 1999 2006 2011 and 2007 after a delay now let's see this time whether our nhrc will get that rating or not so they they put on the hold now they are going to take a review meeting again it is going to be happen in geneva and this observations we already discussed especially there are certain issues flagged by this subcommittee on accreditation related to nhrc and challenges related to nhrc they are not having the enforcing authority and they are suffering from lack of funds limitation of powers and a complaint registered with nhrc they are having the limitation period of one year this is one of the greatest obstacles with respect to nhrc what is the way forward government should take all the steps to make nhrc decisions enforceable and government should ensure the nhrcs are behaving in a very impartial and independent manner regarding that we may if we require any amendments in the statutes we have to do those amendments so that is regarding the conclusion let's see yesterday's video questions consider the following statement the world craft city initiative was launched in 2014 by the unesco no this is not launched by the unesco recently unesco has identified srinagar as a world craft city of course srinagar identified as a world craft city but it is not identified by the unesco so both the statements are wrong answer is d state of world population 2024 report is published by it is published by united nations population fund global forest watch is an initiative of world resources initiative institute so these are the yesterday's video mcqs today's mcq question which of the following statement is not correct about the national human rights commission read all the four statements and pick the right one okay pick the in incorrect one okay main question discuss the role composition and performance of the nhrc suggest measures to improve its functioning this is main question as we reach to the end of this video we do some quick revision in this video we mainly discussed about importance of the human rights and how the human rights evolved then nhrc technical details who appoints nhrc how they will be removed and how long they are going to be there then the composition of the selection committee of nhrc after that we discussed about international organization which involves in accreditation of national human rights commission on what parameters they differ their accreditation what we have to do what kind of expectations should be there from nhrc and what are the issues facing by nhrc so these are the topics we covered in this particular video i hope this video is useful in your preparation thanks for watching this video have a great day jai hind